You know how when you first start playing NBA 2K and you start building up your my player, uh, first you pick the skin tone, you pick the body type, you pick what position they're going to play on the court, and you start going through all that stuff. Then you start getting into the detail stuff, uh, like the hair, the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, and you work your way down to the mouth. And when you get there, you say, all right, it's going to be a mustache, it's going to be a goatee, it's just going to be a beard, and then, oh, something comes up, so you got to go take care of that real quick. You'll get back to editing your my player in a little bit. I feel like I'm that unfinished my player right now since I done shaved my mustache off on the side of the goatee. And, and it's just this line right here. Uh, but anyway, funniest comment is getting pinned in the comment section so everybody can laugh at me. Oh, team, keep it clean. We got some stuff to talk about in this episode. And somebody brought up a very interesting point, something that I did not think about before, but it is something to really pay attention to. Because I don't think we got any official announcement on it yet from the Baltimore Ravens, but I guess y'all will be able to clear that up. Uh, when you give your feedback uh, Before we get into it Make sure you subscribe to the channel Turn your notifications on And leave a like on the video Because it goes a long way Something else that goes a long way I know a lot of y'all like being extra clean Especially when you're on the road If for all your wheel, wheels and your tire needs You can go to powerhousewheels.com uh, And you can use code TKIC5 For 5% off of any order Under a thousand dollars But if you're going even bigger, you can use code TKIC10 for 10% off any order over a stack. So over $1,000. You, so you, you're getting money off regardless. But any order over 1000 you use TK, TKIC10. Any order under 1000 you use TKIC5. So go to powerhousewheels.com and they'll take care of you. So uh, my guy Elijah, um, he brought up something that I had not thought about at all. Let's read his question and get into it. Say, what's up, Engraven? Listen to the question from Subs today. I'm actually proud that Team Keep It Clean is all on the same page. We may be at the end of the bar, but once John Harbaugh retires, and that's wishful thinking, drinks on us. Hey, oh, drinks on y'all. Oh, yeah, I'm there all day. But anyway, he said, that episode really made me close the chapter on a disappointing season and move on to the off season. Hey, that's what it's about, man. Forward thinking now. We're still going to talk about some stuff with the past, but forward thinking. He said, no pressure, but are you doing another video with Mrs. DaCosta? Because my question is really for her as a member of the flock and team. Keep it clean. Okay, we'll, we'll look into that then. We'll, we'll, look, we'll look into that because um, it was nice having her on. She, she was super cool, super, super nice, super, super sweet lady. Uh, shout out to uh, Lacey DaCosta, man. Anyway, he said, this question for Mrs. DaCosta and engraving. Uh, now that EDC has lost his brother from another mother. His right-hand man. And like John Harbaugh, he will be competing against his brother this offseason. How do you think EDC will adjust and will be competing against his Brody uh, to bring out the best in him? Uh, being it's EDC and Joe's first offseason evaluating talent separately, who is EDC's new guy or did Joe take him to L.A. with him? That's such a great question. Because he's talking about Joe Hortiz. And when you look up Joe Hortiz, um, he is the general manager for the Los Angeles Chargers. So he is working with the other Harbaugh. He's working with Jim Harbaugh. But he says he previously served for the Baltimore Ravens in various scouting and executive roles from 1998. This dude has been with the Ravens l literally forever. Forever. Ravens were born in 96. He's been there since they were two. Since they were two. So that is such an underrated part of thinking about what this Baltimore Ravens team will be and how they'll evaluate talent because I, unless y'all know, because a lot of y'all know better than me, I'm not sure that the Ravens have addressed his position yet. Joe Hortiz have addressed replacing him. If they did, it completely went over my head and I missed it. So my apologies. But I'm not sure that they've addressed that yet. So that's a really good thing to think about. Because, again, he's been there. He's been there literally through, every, through everything. So now that Joe Hortiz is gone and he's over there with the Chargers now, how are the Ravens going to address this? Is it time to move on from Ronnie Stanley? Next question came from my guy, Caleb. He said, hey, Raven, hope you and your family are well. Congrats on the baby girl. Hey, I appreciate that. He said, what do you think the Ravens should do with Ronnie Stanley? He's a liability in every way. He takes up too much cap space. He's injured every other play. He's not nearly as good as he was, and he's turning 30 this year. I personally think that a move for the Ravens would be to re-sign John Simpson and Zeitler and move on or, or move on from one or the other and sign a guard or have Ben Cleveland start. But when draft day comes, Stanley gone i think a trade with the tennessee titans would be beneficial for us ronnie stanley a third and a fifth round pick and and rashad Bate. hold up now buddy whoa 
Slow it down. You know what? Let's keep going with your question, though. Yeah, the, the Titans will send us the sixth overall pick uh, and Derrick Henry. Well, okay, let me stop you right there. Derrick Henry's a free agent. So if Ravens want him, they can sign him. And he already gave his goodbye to the Titans. They're not going to franchise tag him. They're not going to hold him back. He's done in Tennessee. So he is a free agent. So he'll be able to sign wherever he wants. It's probably going to be with the Baltimore Ravens, but it's gonna, he could sign wherever he wants. Um, but anyway, he said, uh, as much as it saddens me to see Bateman go, I think he would fit very well on the Titans with T. Higgins. And imagine a backfield of Keith Mitchell and Derrick Henry. That duo alone will give defenses a hard time, let alone Lamar and Mark Andrews. Do you think this is too far-fetched of a trade? And what are your thoughts on Ronnie Stanley? Uh, Ronnie Stanley is somebody who played better down the stretch. Um, yeah, the, the health is a big concern. It's been a big concern for a very long time. And um, the Ravens, since, is, is crazy because... Ever since, even before they signed him, he had health concerns here and there. But after they signed him, it just got worse because that injury was just so bad. It was a really, really bad injury to his ankle. And it, that completely changed his career for the worse. Um, and you feel for him, man. Uh, but since the, the, the timing of it was just so bad because he had just signed like six days before he got the injury. He had just signed a big mega contract extension. Um, and then he got hurt. So that just changed everything. So Ravens were locked in. They couldn't do anything didn't do anything now this offseason i know they can there will be obviously some dead money involved but you could do a post june 1st uh release and i forget the exact numbers on how much money they could free up but it will still be some dead money too um but with ronnie stanley so I, i'm not sure how the ravens would address that if they were to I, I, like i feel like they gotta address left tackle because it's a position where um with ronnie stanley is just you you never know if it's going to be the same again you hope that it is but you never know if it will uh, and you got more reason to believe that it won't than it will uh, because he's been hurt a lot. He's been hurt a lot. He's getting older. Uh, he's not an old man or anything like that. He can still play. But when you look at the salary and all that, you look at that, and, and you, you know what life is like without Ronnie Stanley. That's my point. You know what life is like without him. You've seen what life is like without him. So you need to address the position, and maybe it's time to have life without Ronnie Stanley. But as far as the other trade part, Rashad Bateman, no, you keeping him. Speaking of keeping Bateman, next question came from my guy, Justin. He said, Raven, I agree with you with keeping Bateman. All I would like... If the Ravens would draft Trey Harris the third, I've been ready for this offseason since we lost the AFC Championship. I'm no scout, but I really think he's a one-on-one -on -one matchup nightmare. We will have multiple threats that the defenders will have to cover. I've already tried emailing the Ravens. <laughs> Give me your thoughts on him. Hey, Justin, I ain't get a chance to even think about watching that one single draft prospect yet. So my apologies. I, I can't give you an accurate assessment on how I feel about Trey Harris the third. I know people in the comment section, they're going to be able to right now. But um, I haven't watched a single draft prospect yet. I ain't even been thinking about the draft, really. I, I, I really haven't. I've been seeing people talk about the, the biggest name that I've been seeing is Keon Coleman from FSU. Um, but... I haven't been thinking about the draft like at all. I'm 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 not there yet. I'm, I'm still trying to move on from this season. Just uh, sort of took a, a step back from football a little bit. Well, actually, a lot of it. I mean, got no choice because ain't no football on no more. But um, but yeah, I, I ain't on the draft yet. But when I get there, this will be a name that I keep in mind. Free. Next question came from my guy Michael. He said, "And congratulations on the newest member to the family again. Glad it's a girl. I know you're excited. Dad duty started right now. LOL. But I'm gonna say this and leave it at that. <laughs> Appreciate it, Mike." He said, we made ourselves one-dimensional for free. And if Harbaugh doesn't leave, we will continue to do that when it matters the most. Blessings to you and the family, man. Appreciate that, Michael. Um, wow. <laughs> he said, we made ourselves one-dimensional for free. Not even a charge for it. Um, it was unfortunate, man. It was, it was unfortunate how it went down. And you just wonder how things are going to be in the future. And that's a very scary thought. We started this episode off with my guy Elijah. And we're going to end this episode off with my guy Elijah. He said, this is the real reason I was hoping for the Super Bowl. He said, the exact reason I wanted to win the Super Bowl because I've seen everyone plotting on our defensive coordinator. Mike McDonald is gone. Seattle Seahawks were plotting on him, Mike the moment they let Pete Carroll go. It, you know what? It's probably before that. It was probably when he shut them down. It, when the Ravens played the Seahawks, that's probably when they were plotting on him back then. They're probably like, oh, this guy. Oh, yeah. He's up next. Anyway, um, he said, it's what we should have did. But we're loyal to a fault. Now we're losing another coach who's either going to be our defensive coordinator or Seahawks defensive co Oh, no, no, no. Head coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, he said, they arrogantly bragging about their coaching camp recruitment process might bite us in the long run because it's not a guarantee. Brilliant, innovative coordinators will keep coming through that program. We'll see. 
we'll see. Um, I mean, we got no choice but to wait it out. But with the uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, we um, they they do do a good job a lot of times when it comes to building a good coaching staff. That's one thing you got to give them. Um, in the big moments, that's when hey Mike McDonald. We saw him. He came up, not short, but he showed up. Um, but on some different sides of the ball, they did not. But Ravens usually do a good job of building a nice coaching staff and giving people opportunities. So we're gonna see how it works itself out. We gotta again be patient with the process. Be extra patient now because it's like it's crazy because Ravens had one of the um, Ravens had one of the um, they had one of the longest seasons for NFL team this year. But um, it feels like we're as wave, Ravens fans. I was about to say Ravens fans. As Ravens fans, it feels like we're gonna be waiting extra long to get back to the regular season because of the way that things went down. So it, it's just it, it's tough, man. So it, it's gonna be a long off season. It's already been a, a long weekend. The Super Bowl was just from when I'm recording this. It was six days ago. The Super Bowl was just six days ago. And when you see this, it'll be have obviously be a little longer. But Super Bowl was a little, little, little tiny, little less than a week ago. But it feels like this has been such a long week. But yeah, we'll we'll make it through it. <laughs>